Hi, welcome to my temporary new location where I'll try to make videos in the next few months until my new place is ready. This place has a huge problem. Not for me though, for my landlord. See, this office is a part of another YouTube channel's studio space called Kumon. When they realize that I'm suffocating in my temporary place at home, they generously take, uh, uh, gave me this place. Let me show you. They make very entertaining videos on any subject in Persian, Parsi or Farsi language, however you want to call it. And sometimes in English too. There they are, filming. And this guy here, if you can see him, let me get closer. This guy is Kurosh, the other one is Iman, and they mix their names into Kuman. Despite the fact that Mia here, Kurosh's wife, who is a professional singer songwriter, single handedly runs the channel. I'm sorry, I'm married. Um, oh. uh, I feel like they are trying to tell me something. Uh, the problem is this sign here. As you can see, uh, I feel like the environment is getting a bit agitated. Let me, ju let me just take this away. Let me see. I have to. Okay, there you go. Let me, um, there you go. Okay, let me take this back to my place and fix it. <laughs> so I brought the major problem they had up. So yeah, if you can plug it in, their sign has the problem that if you see, you plug. I think it's fixed. It's not flickering. <laughs> I guess that concludes the video. Let me tell you about my sponsor. <laughs> so now that I have to travel every day to a different city to work, I'll not use my sponsor Sally because I'm still on the same mobile service, but I did use them when I traveled to US for open source and I'll definitely use them every time I travel. Because Sally is an electronic SIM or eSIM app that simply replaces your regular SIM card when you travel, so you won't have to spend millions of dollars on roaming charges. Well, I mean, my mobile service charges between 10 to 20 US dollars daily to allow me to use my services abroad. While using Sally with a fraction of the you can get cellular data on your phone available in more than 200 destinations in the universe. Just download the Sally app on your phone, follow the instructions properly to set it up and use my link sally.com slash electroboom, scan the QR code or use my promo code electroboom on the app to get an additional 15% off of a suitable plan. You do all this before you travel, otherwise you'll be roaming the streets trying to find free Wi-Fi to set it up there. Sally will instantly take over disabling the regular SIM card when you land at your destination and you can text and call over the internet and browse it without getting broke. So definitely try Sally. I think the problem is your setup. Let's replicate your setup and see what happens. In your setup, the sign is in a dimmer area and is out of focus. See, this side is a little bit brighter than exactly. the other side. It's even worse in our own videos. It's much brighter. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in your setup. Your setup is junk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should downgrade to your crappy camera. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, your LEDs have two inputs too, it seems. Why does it have two? Do, do they both do the same thing? Like if I plug the other one. It turns on. What is the difference between the two? Maybe one powers half of it and the other one powers the other half. Then why is the whole thing on if it's... <laughs> let's replicate your setup again. And let's Should I switch, switch the... Yeah, switch the wire. Where's the other wire? There you go. Oh, the K is now bright. That's K in Farsi. Oh, that's K in Farsi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Let's use the double-headed adapter thingy. See what happens. Oh, the whole thing is the same brightness now. Yeah. Why are you making a video again? The problem is solved again. <laughs> you forgot to plug both these in. It's, that was the main problem. Maybe you should cut your sponsor again. Yeah. <laughs> you Sally, don't pay for roaming. But it, the, the problem is, it's too bright. So we can't use this in our videos. It has so to be. dim it then. Then that happens. Ha! So you're trying to dim it by reducing the voltage across all LED colors? Everyone knows you can't do that. 
I didn't know that. <laughs> so, what was the best way to do it then? The best way would be using pulse width modulation or PWM if you know what I mean. I don't know what you P mean. Turning the LEDs on and off so fast that your eyes can't see it, but see it as an average dimmer light. The original way you had it. The original way was the, no. it wasn't good at all. It would flicker a lot and it was too bright, so it would like cast a shadow on our head. So I think I was really smart to get this dimmer thingy, though. <laughs> you would think. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we have the other. One, yeah. the PWMing one, and you can see. Let me turn it on. Oh, it was off. Oh, there you this go. Is what, this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's, it's flickering when, like crazy when you now. Add the thingy to it. That's a sampling artifact, also known as aliasing, huh. that happens when the camera frame rate is slower than the light switching on and off. Won't the light bulbs like burn out if you turn it on and off? These are not light bulbs, for God's sake. These are LEDs. These yeah. are. <laughs> if you like turn on and off, like a. Uh, that was a light. problem with the old incandescent light bulbs that when you turn them on and they are cold, there is a ton of current runs through them and they can get. Them. These are LEDs. That doesn't happen to them. Anyway, I'm thinking to get rid of flickering, I filter the switching voltage, turning it into DC feeding into the LED sign. Like and an ordinary light bulb? So I'm going to use a capacitor to filter the voltage. What's a capacitor? How does it filter? Let me just show you. Okay, we are in the Kumon's bat cave and they did a video with a bunch of orbies that I'm going to use them as electrons. So imagine this is the circuit we are trying to turn on, okay? okay? And these are the charges to turn the circuit on. Nice. And we turn it on like this. We are the power source. <laughs> <laughs> and it only turns on when we are giving it charge so and when there is no charge no it turns off so it no power. blinks on and off right okay. huh. and now we have another bucket here with a hole in the corner yes. right there which is going to act like a capacitor basically a capacitor is something that holds on to charges and releases them in uh, yeah more slowly so we do the same thing we are the power source that is yes. intermittent right we put the charges in there intermittently but as we do that oh it doesn't stop anymore over here. yeah we do it intermittently here but the charges flow continuously into your circuit so your circuit always has power it doesn't turn off anymore that's so cool what if i <laughs> stick my finger in you're gonna get electrocuted, okay. don't do that. <laughs> so as you see, the sign is flickering right now. So as soon as I put the capacitor on, it should Hazen. stop Hazen. It should <laughs> hmm. Clearly that wasn't a good solution, was it? No, it wasn't. <laughs> what the hell was My tiny capacitor was a bad idea <laughs> for two reasons. First was the switching current the capacitor tries to smooth out is like three amps, which overheats the capacitor. And second, I already said earlier that adjusting DC voltage is not a good way to tune brightness. Oh, so okay, I almost lost one eye. What? Oh, what's the difference between turning it on and off fast or like using this thingy that dims it? Every LED is a, a diode. Do you know what a diode is? No. no. Uh, do you know what a check valve is at least? No. no. A check valve is a one-directional valve that allows water to flow only in one direction and not backwards. And a diode, and LED is a diode, is like that, allowing the electric current only in one direction. But imagine different types of check valves might pop, need different pop. initial pressures to pop open, which is a similar case for different color LEDs. Let me show you. I have to peel one of these off. Is it okay? It's okay. Watch. Oh, you want to do it? You, you can do another one if you want. <laughs> this is stop hitting my sign. We can probably put it back, can we? <laughs> it's <a> squishy. Yeah. <laughs> Let me show you what's going on in here. See, we have a bunch of LEDs. I'm very excited to be able to sit here and see this up close. I always watch your videos, so this is like crazy right now. I'm speaking here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's sending 11.38. I should get one of those. <gasps> Did I blow some? Oh, thank oh, God. No, it it didn't blow up. I thought I, blew, I thought I blew it up. What I'm did I do? I'm myself because I know something's going to blow up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should go a little bit. Well, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> so, so you can see the output is 11.37. Of course, yes. this 
output drops over the resistance of the wires and everything until it gets to the circuit. Mm, that's why you should put a buffer in between stuff. What? And across the LEDs themselves, 2.7 volts. Actually, let's, do you want to peel a red one off? Yeah. <laughs> so let's see what is the voltage of the red one. 2.0 almost. Now, these LEDs have resistor series with them to limit the current and they're all in parallel. Do you, do you know what's parallel and serial? Yes. Parallel yeah. is stuff that are like... Movazi. 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 Yes. So it is like having resistive pipes series with different check valves and each branch is in parallel. We raise the pressure across all. The one requiring the least pressure pops open with limited current. We can raise the pressure Pop. so the next Pop. one pops open oh. and so on. So if it's parallel, if you shut off the valve, everything shuts off, but if it's not, maybe I don't know anything. That was a good try. Exact same thing happens to different LEDs. Let's test it. Hello, you know Dimesh going. This is why... Oh, the red one is on now. Yeah, the red one remains on and the, all the other colors turn off because the red one requires less current to turn on. Okay. So that's Nerd. the valve. It's too... Yeah, yeah. The valve is too... Yes. Valving. Valving. <laughs> the valve is valving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so voltage adjustment is not the way to go. Because of different LED behaviors, mm -hmm. if I change the voltage of the string, Different color LED brightnesses change differently, messing the balance between them. Yeah. These strings are designed to have proper brightnesses at a fixed known DC voltage, which is 12 volt for these. From there, the only proper way to dim them is by pulse width modulation, switching lights on and off fast. Each color turns to full brightness and then turns fully off. <laughs> wait, wait. So when it's when you're dimming it with the PWM, my eyes doesn't see it. If it is fast enough, your eyes don't see it. Okay. Simple as Why that. Why does the camera see it? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> Let me dig into your PWM dinner. This thing is an oscilloscope, mm. which basically shows the changes in voltage. And if I measure the voltage across the LED string, we see oh. that. <laughs> it peaked. Yeah, yes, uh, it is turning on and off at around 147 hertz, which is close to a multiple of the 30 frames per second the camera is capturing. Oh, okay. See, this happens when you sample an alternating entity like a blinking LED at a sample rate lower than twice its frequency. Uh, what is frequency? <laughs> Frequency means how many times the cycles of an alternating entity repeat in one second. So imagine we have our LED blinking at one frequency and our camera is sampling at a different frequency, which means they are shifting relative to each other. If we move our sampling window over the blinking LED, we oh. see aliasing artifacts, where to the camera it looks like the LED is fully on for a long period and fully off for another. Let me solder something to your driver. So here, I'm going to inject my own frequency to turn the LED on and off. Here, it is 1 hertz, 20% on, 80% off. Nice. And we can increase the frequency before... Uh, oh, nah. oh my god. <laughs> before it becomes a disco. <laughs> Uh, it's hurting my eyes. I hope the audience <laughs> doesn't faint. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's getting better. Okay, around 70 hertz seems okay to the eyes, no? It is. At 148 hertz, we don't see it flicker anymore. It's just a light at 20% brightness. But the camera sees it with the frame rate and shutter rolling combined, it looks turning on and off. I think the more you're working on it, the worse it's getting. No, <laughs> If we increase the frequency to 4.5 kHz, you see there are more lines closer to each other. And if I change the shutter speed, I raise it to 8 thousandths of a second, Whoa. the lines become very sharp. And if I make the shutter speed slower, it becomes very soft. I think I know how to fix it. Maybe we should get a new driver. Or maybe new cameras. Do you see new cameras? New lenses. Ah, I can't. Let me explain. 
First, I create a high frequency PWM of around 5 to 10 kilohertz to create narrow rolling lines like this. And then, if we reduce the shutter speed to your regular speeds of slower than hundreds of a second, the lines get blurry and merge into each other and we don't see them anymore. <laughs> Okay, you guys go watch TikTok or whatever you kids do and I'll make the circuit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, done. Kids! See, your LED driver gets commands from a remote control to change the duty cycle of a PWM it's generating that feeds into the MOSFETs that switches the LEDs mm -hmm. on and off. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm Bro. going to cut the connection between that PWM and the MOSFETs, bring that PWM into my circuit, filter it into DC, and then I'll have a Schmidt trigger comparator to generate these sawtooth waveforms, which I'll compare to that DC level I generated, which will give me these higher frequency PWM signals that will feed into the MOSFETs to drive the LEDs. I'm not going to do anything. What is he talking about? I'm going to go to TikTok and see you on TikTok. I'm not going to go. Let me just plug it. چو جدی فکر کنم یه ذره خوله من نمیدونم چیکار کنم اصلا بلده چرا هی میتره که علکی چیزا هی میتره که علکی چیزا اسمشو الکتروبومه اولش بهتر بود اولش به خدا بهتر بود استودیونم آتیش نگرفت اون دوباره اصلا واقعا مهم نبود اصلا چیز واقعا مهمی نبود من نمیدونم چرا دارن غلط چی پیشو گفت Okay, let's just look at the scope. See, you remember that PWM on-off signal from your board that we initially saw? Yes. I filtered that into DC. Now, when we change the PWM duty cycle on that one, the DC level oh. goes up and down. Wow. <laughs> then I created this sawtooth looking voltage at around 6 to 7 kilohertz and I compare it with this DC line I had before to generate a PWM signal at much higher frequency and like when the sawtooth is higher than the DC the PWM is low and vice versa. Now with the remote I change the DC level and so I can change the PWM on off times and affect the LED brightness. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. It's oh, beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. So with this, we can dim the LEDs and with proper camera settings, we don't see any flicker anymore. Finally! So all I need to do is to cut this circuit small and shove it into the same box as the other one and Bob is your uncle. Bob is Bahram. Magic. My uncle is magic. Okay, cool. I have three uncles to be honest. I have five. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. And I just wanted to say these kids are some of the kindest kids I've seen in a big time. They gave me this office and all the, you know. No, 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 no. We love no, having it's... you. It's an honor just sitting beside yeah. you. No, let, uh... me, let me kiss you. <laughs> let me kiss you. <laughs> you just have to learn Farsi to watch these guys' content. It's so you. great. We love you so no, much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you next time. Oh, boy.